It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. Welcome in to the South Point Studio. It is Sports by the Book. I'm Jeff Parles. Happy to be with you. Leading you into week two of the National Football League. And there's no one better to be alongside me. The Hall of Famer. You see him here at the South Point. Gone gaming. Our guy Vinny Maliulo alongside. What do you say, Jeffrey? How are you, buddy? I, you know. Already week two. I can donate my Achilles to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. We, uh, there's a lot of people that would. <laughs> it, 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 a lot of people that would might prefer you under center, buddy. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's be a little careful with I mean, that one. Local I, boy, I, local I, boy comes out of retirement. I, I was known to throw a lot of a lot of interceptions in recess football. How how far uh, did you grow up from 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 MetLife? MetLife. MetLife. Pretty close, right? Right down Route 17. Yeah, about 20, 25 minutes. There you go. It's a perfect headline. You know, you know the blue the blue laws on on Sunday with all the malls closed in Bergen County. Mm -hmm. Twenty minutes, easy on a on a football Sunday. Local boy comes back. <laughs> Fails miserably. No, but in, in all seriousness, we'll get to that a little bit later uh, because we have a lot to get to here in this hour. And we'll be with you every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, getting mm -hmm. you ready for your football week during the fall, NFL, college, whatever the heart desires. You'll be able to hear it and watch it here on Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. And Vinny, let's just dive right in. Yeah. At the moment here, uh, just about two hours before game time. Down I-95 from MetLife Stadium. Of course, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the site tonight for the Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings. Eagles, you know, it was it's a weird outing for them on Sunday against the Patriots. They get out big. They let New England back mm -hmm. in the game. The Patriots even have a drive at the end of the game to win the game. Philly does get their stop. They win. They win it. They cover. Minnesota, bad loss at home to a yep. team that is considered one of the worst in the league going into the year in Tampa. Mm -hmm. But the betters like Minnesota so far in this game. Well, they do, and and here's a couple of things here. Uh, you know, about first of all, Philly escaped, right? Let's face it. They I mean, did. you yes. know, uh, full marks to them for winning the game. But uh, the uh, uh, not only did uh, the the Patriots have a chance to cover, they had a chance to win the game at the end, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Philly had to come up uh, big on on defense. Um, the Vikings clearly. Without a running game, we're going to have to make some adjustments here. But you, to your point, this game did open with uh, the Eagles 8 here at the South Point, and the numbers again going up earlier now. So on Sunday uh, Sunday evening uh, for the NFL numbers, uh, opened 8, and it's uh, uh, been a, a pretty steady stream of Vikings money. They took everything down to as low as 5.5 briefly. Then they laid it, now here we sit currently at 6, the total. Uh, back to the opener of 48 and a half. Jeff uh, got as high as 49 and a half. But uh, so far, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna need the Eagles. Um, no, no Gainwell at running back for the Eagles tonight either, right? So yep, and uh, multiple defensive injuries. So I think that probably played into the uh, the mindset uh, and and the betting pattern that we've seen so far. But the other thing is this: let's let's remember this. This is week two. This is overreaction Sunday. Oh, what makes by you a say lot that? of folks? Well, look <laughs> now. It, 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 by the way, what, think about this. Last week, Patrick Mahomes, yeah, Josh Allen, yeah, right. They they both lost Joe Burrow, and so too. did Joe Burrow. Yeah, right. So you look at those. The, so everybody's wait, wait. Now, do they come back? Do they bounce back? Um. You know, people are, are are talking about you know the Jets' big victory, and of course we'll get to that. Uh, and and Aaron Rodgers getting knocked out, but we can't overreact. It's not like we you know all of a sudden changed our 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 power ratings drastically and things like that. We've seen this in the past, and this is something that we're going to pay very close attention to. And let's face it, especially when the league went to three preseason games a few years back. September is still. I'm not saying they're they're pre you know they're exhibition games by any means because the, the starters are in there, but their teams are still sorting things out, and so there's going to be some upsets. There's going to be some very surprising not only results but statistical performances that look out of sorts, and that's what we pay very close attention to, and professional betters do as well. Well, I mean, you mentioned arguably the three best quarterbacks in the league yeah. last week. Mm -hmm. Mahomes lost, granted. I wasn't on him. His his 
was, skill position players it, failed him last Thursday they, night. His receivers were awful. Yeah, they were awful. Uh, Canarius Tony especially awful a week ago. Joe Burrow threw for under 100 passing yards. Correct. And everybody was talking about, well, it was the weather. Well, nah, I don't know. I, I, I know. I know this. The Browns played in the same weather, so yeah. go ahead. And then Allen turned it over four times. That's over. correct. So yeah. you could argue the three best quarterbacks in the game, I have Allen lower than the top three, but that's a different argument for a different time. They were all as bad as we're going to probably see that, see them this year, Vinny. That's just what it is. Yeah, I think, you know, again, that's why you don't want to overreact. You know there will be adjustments made. And, uh, you know, and, and listen, let's face it, by the way, uh, all of those teams are favored still. So yes. it's not like they're they're underdogs. Now, did we make a little bit of an adjustment? Yeah, just but not as big of an adjustment as I, I think some people might uh, might have expected. We'll get to some of those games as we go through here on the hour here at Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. I'm Jeff Parles, Vinny Maliulo, alongside. Again, we'll be with you Thursday through Monday here That's right. from this studio and this location. Sportsbook behind us, as always. And uh, as and, uh, and this will come up a bunch during this show and throughout these shows. Minus 110 both sides, guys. Minus 110 both sides. And there are a lot of games this week that other books in town across the country have some evens, some even some plus 105s on some sides. That's not going to happen. Well, you're talking about mainly on the, on the number of three, right? The key yep. number of three, Jeff. And again, it's a, it's not a a, a, a critique of uh, you know what some folks do. Over the years, I've done both. Uh, it's just a, a, a practice here uh, at the saw point that if if we've got to get off a of three, we're going to get off a of three. I'll go to three and a half or two and a half, whatever the case may be. And there are some games that I'll uh, walk you through that uh, that uh, we've we've done that already. So. Um, again, some folks they'll they'll move the money on the three. They'll go to minus three, perhaps uh, you know minus fifteen cents or minus twenty instead of going to three and a half. Um, they may go to minus three plus one hundred five, uh, you know, uh, at, at some point, uh, or or minus three minus a nickel. So it it depends, and uh, that uh, instead of instead of going to two and a half. So again. Uh, that but that's also the opportunity for betters to shop. Yeah, and, and that's uh, that's fine. Vinny, just going back to tonight's game mm -hmm. here as well. Team totals up for the Vikings and the Eagles as well this week. As always, you guys will be doing that for every single game. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the card as the week goes along. Yep. And, and also, too, Vinny, you guys do a, a selection of, of game props as well for all these prime times. Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, and when, when you look at, uh, uh, you know, we, we've got first half props, too. So here's one, you know, just to, uh, along the lines of what you're talking about. Total points scored by the Eagles in the first half. You can bet over and under 14 and a half. And uh, the, uh, the under is favored at minus 135. Um, first half points by the, uh, by the Vikings, nine and a half over favored, uh, you know, minus 140. So, you know, there are a lot of folks also like individual player props. These, uh, but, but they're, they're, we like these statistical team props because there's not as many out there, so we do quite a bit of business here with these, and this is what what works for our clientele. And so, uh, look, you know, we uh, and we got alternate point spread props too. So this these are very popular here. Um, if you like the Eagles and you only want to lay three and a half, you can do so, but you're also going to put up more juice on that one. That's m minus one fifty. So that's because it's such a variant from the actual point spread on the game. Um, Eagles minus 14 and a half. You can take three to one, uh, on the Eagles. If, uh, you know, if you think that they're, they're going to uh, pretty much dominate and win the game by more than two touchdowns. So we've got, uh, we've got those, uh, those are the ones that, that, uh, that work for us here at the South point and, uh, the ones that the folks enjoy. And you mentioned over, this is overreaction week from the betters, especially. And it's, and it's interesting. And we mentioned this at the beginning with this game, that this is not one of those games where Minnesota, yes. Philadelphia won. They didn't win comfortably. They were far from right. their best. Mm -hmm. But Minnesota lost at home to a team that was, for me, I had empowered Tampa as a bottom three team in the NFL going into the year. And a team that the futures markets didn't like. They were the long shot in the worst division in the NFL to win a division going into the year. And Tampa walked into U.S. Bank Stadium a week ago, Vinny, and won the game outright against Minnesota. But that is not uh, deterred betters in 
We also know the narrative of Kirk Cousins in, in primetime games as well. Well, when you think about the fact that Baker Mayfield had a better Sunday than Joe Burrow, right? I mean, he sure did. Think, th- think about that. I mean, that that that's a shock. There were some shocks last week, not just surprises, but absolute shocks. So you know, and we'll talk about some other ones uh, that, yeah. that 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 occurred as well. But that that's certainly one of them. But credit Baker Mayfield, who's gotten an opportunity here. Right with some veteran receivers, pretty you know some veteran def- but veteran players really on both sides of the ball, and he he took it upon himself. He went in there. He's always been gutsy, and he showed it. But and the Vikings look last year. Let's remember the Vikings record in one score games was phenomenal. That was the that, best ma- that made their team season. in the history of the league. So last year. you 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 look at that, and now you say, so do they? You know, do, do, does. Does it catch up to them, right? Does it get back to, to be in balance? And, and obviously, I think that's a, that played a part uh, in, in or plays a part in, in the way some folks are, are looking at the Vikings this year. And again, the, the, the lack of ability for them to run the ball, I think is that's a big adjustment for the Vikings this year. So far. It's one of the reasons that that win total didn't move all summer. And Aiden, for Minnesota. It stayed pretty much flat. It stayed yeah. eight and a half. It didn't it, the juice pretty didn't flat. even move. It didn't even pretty move. Pretty flat. It was it was one of uh the the it, and I can't even say that it was because of two way action. It just was kind of a you know what just people just didn't pass, bother with a, it. A pass. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's not just a, a you know, balanced action or two way action that, that occurs uh, in, 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 in things sometimes. It's simply a fact, you know what? I'll, people looked at, at other teams. Vinny, we'll keep it rolling here. We'll look at all the games for week two. We'll look at also a college game tonight as well. Uh, Bethune-Cookman in Miami? Uh, Florida, you, is that you, the one you're talking hey, about? you do have a line on that. We do. You do have a line. Yeah, you have to lay uh, seven and a half scores on Miami tonight. 53 and a half. Yeah, if, if, you, if you want the Canes tonight against... Would you lay that? No. I didn't think so. I don't think I touched that game in any fashion. Memphis and Navy, look at that game. We'll also look at the rest of the card and keep you updated for tonight's game in the NFL, again, as of right now at the South Point, the Eagles, six-point favorites with a total of 48.5, which is exactly what it opened at after a slight move to the over. We're back with more next as we keep it rolling at the South Point studio. It is Sports by the Book. If you're celebrating a special occasion or just love fine dining, you're in the right place. Come experience the crown jewel of South Point restaurants, Michael's Gourmet Room. Welcome. With over 600 different types of wines and magnificent dishes prepared tableside, you'll revel in the rich classic Vegas decor and the best black tie service in the world. This intimate gourmet room has earned accolades galore. Come to Michael's Gourmet Room for an unforgettable dining experience. Another famous restaurant is the Silverado Steakhouse, where you'll find the charm and service that discerning patrons require. From top quality steaks and chops to fresh seafood and desserts, you'll love the award-winning wine list and menu at Silverado Steakhouse. Steak lovers have even more options with primarily prime rib. Catering to hearty appetites, the menu features a variety of flavorful prime rib cuts, dry aged to ensure tenderness, and then seasoned and slowly roasted. Although prime rib is our specialty, it's not the only thing on the menu. There's something for everyone. And if you're craving a taste of Italy, come experience delicious Italian cuisine and the attentive service at Don Vito's. Our culinary team starts with the freshest ingredients and transforms them into traditional favorites. And don't forget Italian desserts. Don Vito's, savor the taste of Italy. Finally, if sushi is more your style, join us at the popular Zenshin Asian restaurant and sushi bar where we're serving up the freshest sashimi, nigiri, and sushi rolls. And beyond the sushi, an exciting contemporary Asian cuisine menu, plus a variety of specialty drinks, Japanese and domestic beer, wine, and sake. Balance your hunger with Zenshin. Welcome back in. It's Sports by the Book here at the South Point studio. I'm Jeff Parles. Vinny Malleuel alongside. We're happy to be with you. Kicking off for week two in the NFL. College football gets going for week three tonight as well. Bring Vinny back in right now as we stand here at the South Point. 
The Eagles, a six-point favorite tonight against the Minnesota Vikings. The total, I mentioned it going in the break, 48 and a half. Now, that's where you opened, Vinny. There was some action to the over, but has come back down as we've gone through today. Well, betters, you... There are times when you're, you're going to look at games and your inc first inclination is, is always to bet over. People love to root for points, right? They cheer defense for their, for their team at the stadium, right? We get that great chant and everything like that. I've said it for years. They're lying, right? <laughs> because they, they, love, they love to bet over. But to make money, if you're going to make money if, with totals, yeah. there are times you're going to have to pick your spots and, and look to the under. Uh, pay attention to weather. Pay attention to to injuries uh, and, and things like that. So this one here, two-way action so far, 48 and a half, as you mentioned, when we opened on Sunday night here at the South Point and uh, got as high uh, as 49 and a half and uh, now back to the opener of 48 and a half. It will probably, uh, it, it, it may tick up. I mean, I think the weather looks uh, pretty decent right now from what we're seeing. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, hurricane uh, impacting the uh, uh, the stadium right now. So. That looks pretty darn perfect for yeah. September so, in Philly. And, and oftentimes, too, people think that snow is, uh, you know, could, could impact the under snow. Nope. Sometimes impact has more of an impact on the over rain. The big factor wind. with weather is wind yeah. uh, as, as far as impacting uh, the, the under more so. Just, uh, just like uh, when you experience a flight delay, wind's usually more so than rain, unless if you're flying out of Newark Airport. You've couldn't done that. Have you done that a couple of times? Couldn't, couldn't help myself on that one. There you go. Couldn't help myself there. All right. So before we look at more on in this week two card, I want to. I just want to look at something macro here from last week. Yep. Quarterback play was bad last week across the board. Quarterback it was, it was, play. It was the, it was the <clears throat> fewest amount of points scored in the week one in ten years. Mm -hmm. It was the fewest amount of yards thrown for in twenty five years in a week one. Right. It is. It was a really bad week across the board, for the most part, for quarterback play. Now, yes, you had an 83 thrown in there with Burrow. Uh, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt in snap four. Uh, you mentioned Josh Allen and, and right. Patrick Mahomes were not themselves a week ago. But, again, I would imagine, Vinny, that doesn't have that big of an impact because it's just one week, and as you said earlier, Really acting as a fourth preseason week, even though it's a regular season. Yeah, week. I think. Listen, um, well, let's look at all three of those guys, right? I yep. mean, um, Patrick Mahomes was was fine. He was he he really kept his team in the game. Yeah. I mean, when, I thought when he played well, it, actually. He, he 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 was. I thought he was good. He was Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Uh, particularly improvising, uh, his receivers did not get the job done. It did not help. Uh, with Travis Kelsey being out, uh, looks by all, all indications are by the way that Travis Kelsey is probably going to play this week. Yep. Um, but the decision making on uh, Josh Allen, I think he hurt himself. Uh, he did not have a good game by his own admission. And uh, Joe Burrow just, but they, they were completely out of sync. By the way, all three of those losses. If you had made a hundred dollar bet uh, on or whatever you you could have bet, you could have got about nine to one. Uh, on, on the bad, money line on Sunday, those, Monday. you know, three opposing sides, uh, which, you know what, look, who would have, you know, could somebody have had a bad game? Yeah. Sure. Um, and maybe lost, uh, probably you know, when you look at it, the, the Bengals was, uh, was the shortest, uh, uh, was short, wound up being the shortest number because there was a play for the, uh, for the Browns. And then of course, going into the game, the Jets, uh, uh, you know, were, were not, they were two and uh, two and a half point dogs, but that said. Um, surprises nonetheless, uh, and you know, the, the entire, the entire Bengals team looked out of sync. It wasn't just Joe Burrow. So receiver, the receivers you know, were bad they, too. They were bad. Every the offensive line was, was not good. Um, so look, actually the Bills offensive line was not, not, not that good. Well, either, so, think about so it, you know, with that, I think there's two factors. I did have the Bills when we were going through just looking at offensive lines mm -hmm. going into the year. I did have them on the back end. of the year. But they're also going against the best front in the league. The Jets didn't even have to bring pressure at all, and they were still getting mm -hmm. Well, talk about, you know, an offensive line, and that's going to be 
uh, something it's, to monitor. It's, it's been a it's been a work in progress. You know, we talked about it uh, previously when you know the Jets. Don't forget, they did have the benefit. Or I guess it was a benefit uh, for for them uh, of a fourth preseason game because they played in the uh, the Hall of Fame game. Cleveland did too. Uh, Again, against the Browns, but the the big question mark for the Jets in in you know, uh, OTAs in, in in the preseason and in camps. Look, the reality is they're off. They had eighteen combinations of the offensive line in that first that first preseason game, and and you know what? The next the next three there were there maybe not have been eighteen, but there were sure, sure there plenty. Are a lot of them. So, um, their offensive line is going to have to be the key, especially now with Zach Wilson. Uh, as 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 their quarterback, and so uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna see just how that plays out. Because look, let's face it, and you know maybe maybe we go to it now and uh, let's go and, to it and look at it because yeah. the Cowboys, uh, as high as nine and a half at one point at uh, one time, are now nine point favorites against the Jets. We saw what they did to the Giants in a complete domination on Sunday night, forty to nothing. That the, the Dallas defense is good. I mean, uh, this is going to be. Uh, a, a, so I, I thought the Bills' defense played well the other night, uh, but the, I think the Bill, uh, the uh, the Cowboy defense is better. So we're going to get a, a chance to see. And by the way, here it is, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, when you look at it, the Cowboys were three and a half in the look ahead number. Uh, that was with Rodgers. I mean, you you once again you have almost a seven point. You got a six point difference. Still. Uh, the most meaningful player to the number as he's been for several years. Surprised that we haven't seen any book really touch 10 at all. Nine and a half seems to be the, the overwhelming buy point. There's, well, there's some eight and a half in the market now. Yeah. Of course, you're at nine. One other prominent mm -hmm. book in town is also at nine. Well, I think what what you'll see, it, it's going to depend. Now, let's face it. Here we are. We're sitting here on on Thursday evening, right? So that is a uh, you know a one twenty five Pacific start on Sunday. It's going to depend not only on what happens with straight bets between now and kickoff for that game, Jeff, but what's going to that game from starting tonight and then on Sunday morning. What I mean by that, uh, for the folks who I want to clarify. Those are the multi-leg uh, bets that are going to that game. The Cowboys are going to be an enormous teaser uh, by the gen general public, right? So, uh, but parlays, um, you know, money lines and things like that. So that's certainly going to impact what transpires with that number. Was the initial nine and a half teaser protection too for you guys or no? No, I mean it was just a. Not really. I mean, you're not going to base it on you. You already you already know that that's going to be a teaser game. I mean, it's just it's the adjustment. It's uh, it's the Rogers adjustment and uh, six whole it, points, it, which is I right. Mean, it's, it's right. It, it's what he's been uh, yeah. for for the past several years for sure. Jets will go with Wilson this week. They still have not signed a veteran quarterback behind him, so Tim Boyle will be the backup moving forward until the Jets decide to bring someone else in, which I would imagine would happen would have happened by now. I thought it would have, to, to be Colt honest. Colt McCoy uh, still sitting on his couch. See, that's just how, I mean, how just, sad it is at this point that Colt McCoy is the good I, option. I've got to tell you, Bill, well, he's a free agent. Yeah. It's, it's not lo as though he's going to cost – it's not like you have to make a trade right. for Colt McCoy and give up draft picks. Uh, and by the way, the Jets maintain that, uh, at least keep right now. They'll keep pick. their first round, round pick because of uh, Rodgers not meeting the minimum percentage of snaps. Uh, as part of that agreement with the with the Green Bay Packers, Packers do get the the second round pick uh, instead. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised now. Part of it may be to protect, if you will, uh, Zach Wilson's psyche. Uh, I would say so. But it's still a business, and uh, the business says uh, you've got to have somebody. I mean, right now, who's on the practice squad? I don't think they have anybody on the practice well, squad. It was, Tim, it was Tim Boyle. Yeah, it was, was Tim on, Boyle, but that's on. what I'm saying. They yeah. haven't even added anybody, you know, uh, because you're allowed to have three suited up, but, but that third one can't come in unless the other, the other two, two get hurt. hurt yeah. Which, But now, again, we're, we're, it, it's, I'm, I'm surprised that the Jets have not uh, signed someone uh, at this point, just as a matter of protection, right. uh, you know, uh, and on, uh, for the depth chart. I'm with you. I'm stunned that they haven't brought anyone in uh, yet, but I would ex expect them 
at least by early next week, get someone in there, maybe even by Friday. Uh, like you said, as protection, Boyle did not suit up, was not activated uh, off the practice squad for Monday. So if Zach Wilson had gotten hurt, we would have saw Randall Cobb a quarterback. And Probably. Been a disaster, too, uh, even though Jets found a way to get it done against Buffalo on Monday night. I want to get one more game here. This is one that many of you guys opened it pick. The road team took the initial money, and now the favorite is flipped back to the home team. And that's Green Bay and Atlanta, the former spot for Aaron Rodgers. Jordan mm -hmm. Love was awesome in it, his first start as the actual starter in Green Bay. The Packers annihilated the Bears. I didn't, I didn't quite understand why everyone, oh, why not everyone, but a lot of people love Chicago going into the year. They did. Didn't improve as much as I would have expected to warrant a win total four and a half wins above what they did a year ago. Green Bay smacked them around. They did lose Aaron Jones, though. Uh, and other injuries right now for Green Bay on the offensive line. Uh, Vinny, I would say, has dictated this move from Green Bay one and a half two days ago to now Atlanta one and a half as we sit right now. Yeah, what's interesting here, Jeff, is early in the week, uh, uh, you mentioned we opened at Pick'em. Uh, it did get as high as the Packers one and a half. Yep. And that, there's a flurry when the numbers first go up too, right? And that's professional money. Pros not only, they don't wait till Sunday in, in in case of the NFL to bet. Sometimes they don't even bet on Sunday. They're already they're already uh, done betting, you know. So uh, it did get as high as the Packers one and a half, and then has come down. Uh, got back to pick yesterday, and now uh, today the Falcons are a one point favorite. Of course, uh, they uh, uh, they were victorious last week in a division game against Carolina. Uh, the total on this one bet under from forty down to thirty nine. So. Uh, uh, that's the uh, the lowest uh, total that we've uh, we've got uh, on the board right here. Um, the Saints Panthers is r hovering right there too, about a half point higher. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, been about the Bears in the last uh, twenty four hours. You know, I, I will say this with the Bears in in the uh, in Tampa there. That was another one. Look ahead lines. Uh, I'm sorry, the Falcons yeah, in the last twenty four hours. But uh, just keeping it in the NFC North and in NFC North NFC South battle here. Vinny, this was one of those where the look at lines is Chicago is a favorite. And now you guys open Tampa three. It's been bet to two and a half now. Mm -hmm. Total another low one, 41 a night. That's, I think that's something we're going to have to get used to in the beginning of the year, Vinny, where these totals are going to be coming in a lot lower than we've been getting used to over the last few years. Well, especially in the first month, yeah. right? Until offenses get in sync and, uh, uh, you know, find, find their uh, footing literally. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, you look, a big surprise last week. The Buccaneers were a big surprise. We talked about it in the first segment, and credit uh, Baker Mayfield especially. Mike Evans was terrific. Uh, the defense made uh, timely stops. So, I, you know, I, I've got to tell you, and it's not easy for, for Baker Mayfield, right? The guy's been bounced around, and he's following in the footsteps of a legend. Uh, let's face it, even Brady, it still was still Brady's team, right? And yeah. and in, in, in people's mind, how are they going to compete? I mean, they were the the fourth choice in the division, uh, and they go on the road and uh, and and beat a playoff team, and uh, the, and and so credit them for that. So this adjustment too is based on the Bears' performance. This is not overreaction. This is this is this is warranted. Uh, oh, I agree. The Bears have issues. And uh, the Bucks uh, played played well, and it looks like Mayfield's got that. You know they're going to compete. So, uh, but they did take a, they took, but that's a play on the number too. Yeah, I mean it's not like I I'm going to you know bet the Bears here. I mean it's it's simply a play on the number three. If and I I suspect uh, we'll see some uh, uh, some Buccaneer money, and if it does here at the South Point, we'll go back to three. You know it's it's just one of those games for me where. I have a ticket on Tampa to have the least amount of wins in the NFL. I am already knowing I'm in trouble on that because they already got a game that I didn't expect them to win, and mm -hmm. they're in a horrible division where, yeah, there's three 1-0 and teams. Atlanta was not impressive in victory. New Orleans was especially not impressive. Escape, in another escape. And Carolina, I mean, they just don't look – Bryce Young just doesn't look ready. Well a rookie quarterback uh you know welcome welcome to the NFL look there's there's so much put on these young quarterbacks these first and second year quarterbacks that you know I, look i remember certainly when when Dan Marino and and John Elway came into the league they they were just so much they were farther ahead in oh, yeah. their, in their development right but in this day and age you know with with the speed and the the complexity of schemes and things like that 
it's it's hard to to get that transition especially dealing with the speed and the way defenses can uh, can hide uh, different schemes and, and and adjust quickly there's an awful lot being put on on these quarterbacks these days and especially early in the season where they're trying to get into sync oh and by the way they had one less preseason game to uh, to, yeah. to get ready you know we used to say you know poo poo the uh, the preseason well there was something to it where teams could get into a rhythm particularly in in, in the, uh, uh, that second third and maybe even the first quarter of that fourth week well we're not seeing it anymore and um these quarterbacks are uh, are having to make huge adjustments Vinny, when we come back we got more in the nfl including a big matchup in detroit the lions and the seahawks a game that we saw 87 points combined in a year ago not quite that total in Detroit this go around, but we'll have that game and more as we keep it rolling. It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. If you're celebrating a special occasion or just love fine dining, you're in the right place. Come experience the crown jewel of South Point restaurants, Michael's Gourmet Room. Welcome. With over 600 different types of wines, and magnificent dishes prepared tableside, you'll revel in the rich classic Vegas decor and the best black tie service in the world. This intimate gourmet room has earned accolades galore. Come to Michael's Gourmet Room for an unforgettable dining experience. Another famous restaurant is the Silverado Steakhouse, where you'll find the charm and service that discerning patrons require. From top quality steaks and chops to fresh seafood and desserts, you'll love the award-winning wine list and menu at Silverado Steakhouse. Steak lovers have even more options with primarily prime rib. Catering to hearty appetites, the menu features a variety of flavorful prime rib cuts, dry aged to ensure tenderness, and then seasoned and slowly roasted. Although prime rib is our specialty, it's not the only thing on the menu. There's something for everyone. And if you're craving a taste of Italy, come experience delicious Italian cuisine and the attentive service at Don Vito's. Our culinary team starts with the freshest ingredients and transforms them into traditional favorites. And don't forget Italian desserts. Don Vito's, savor the taste of Italy. Finally, if sushi is more your style, join us at the popular Zenshin Asian restaurant and sushi bar where we're serving up the freshest sashimi, nigiri, and sushi rolls. And beyond the sushi, an exciting contemporary Asian cuisine menu, plus a variety of specialty drinks, Japanese and domestic beer, wine, and sake. Balance your hunger with Zenshin. Welcome back in to Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. I'm Jeff Parles. Happy to be with you. Kicking off week two in the NFL, week three in college football. Hall of Famer Vinny Maliulo alongside. There's our, our fun little studio sports book behind us, as always. That's right. Lining up. Lining up, getting ready. Eagles and Vikings a little under two hours from now. Minnesota, six point underdogs with a total of 48 and a half for a matchup we saw a year ago in week two. In prime time, where the Eagles just smacked around the Vikings in that game last season. But Vinny, there is also a college game tonight that gets going in just about an hour at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis hosting Navy. And Vinny, we just had a little bit of a move over the last few minutes here at the South Bowl. Yep. Uh, uh, Memphis now uh, 13 and a half. Jeff, we opened this game 14 and a half, got down to 13. So they took Navy early and then uh now we've uh, a little while ago just uh, took some money on memphis overall pretty you know decent two-way action two-way action on the total too 47 on the opener um 40 uh i got as high as 48 now back to 47 so um that's what we like to see you know that, that's our goal listen i mean would you love to have equal action on both sides doesn't always doesn't always happen that way but uh, uh as long as you get to, you find that threshold where you can get some buyback then uh, that's fine. And uh, so overall two-way action here. Navy sitting there one and one in Memphis looking to stay un, uh, unbeaten uh, as they head into this game at 2-0. and Memphis uh, destroyed Arkansas State a week ago. Arkansas State's probably the worst team in FBS from what we've seen 
through two weeks, uh, only losing uh, by combined one, uh, excuse me, one ten to three in two games. Yeah, it's pretty good. They right? did kick that field goal too. Yeah, uh, they got the three. Uh, uh, so they're probably one of the worst in college football. Navy, after getting pummeled by Notre Dame in Ireland, bounced back, got a win against FCS Wagner, twenty-four nothing a week ago. I I want to see how Memphis looks because they are a team that is capable of winning the American this year, especially with. Tulane's quarterback, Michael Pratt, dealing with an injury. Mm -hmm. UTSA has not been overly impressive in their introduction to the conference. Uh, an opportunity here for Memphis, and this is an early season conference game as well. Well, it's and it's so they they typically you know put themselves in this position, and all of a sudden there's a, there's a game that they, they they lay an egg or you know lose unexpectedly as a as a decent favorite, right? We've seen yep. that in recent years. So uh, I'm sure uh, the coaching staff's going to keep them focused here, but this is a uh, this is a game that uh, they, again, I think people expect them to handle and win, and uh, it's just a matter of whether or not they, they can win by uh, two or more touchdowns to cover. Memphis is the only undefeated American Athletic Conference team left. Right now. Everyone else has a loss. Everybody has a loss. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not the same AAC as it was a year ago with the defections. Is anybody the same? Uh, <laughs> and, and next year, of course. Uh, Even more you know, craziness. Yeah. Well, we won't have a Power Five anymore. We'll have like a power, what, a power four, four. Four, four and a quarter, maybe? Three and a half? Something. Depending on how you look at I the I think uh, it depends on ACC. where where the, what happens with the ACC, right? Yeah, big game next week, uh, Florida State and Clemson in the ACC. So we'll be looking forward to that, mm -hmm. previewing that game on this show next Friday and Saturday. All right, back to the NFL here, Vinny. I want to bring up this one because we've talked about it. With bad quarterback play by elite quarterbacks, and for Cincinnati, doesn't get any easier. Baltimore comes into town. Of course, we saw this matchup in the playoffs a year ago. No Lamar. Tyler Huntley got the start in that game. Baltimore had the was going in to take the lead and put the game away, actually, against Cincinnati. And then the fumble returned by Sam Hubbard. Flipped that game on its head and really changed the course of the AFC playoffs a year ago. Baltimore last week, I know they covered a big number against Houston. They didn't really impress me. They didn't have to do much. Because Houston has no horses on offense, along with the rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud. Vinny, you guys are sitting at the only three flat in the market right now, as you usually, as you always do, with the minus one ten on both sides. Forty six and a half here in a big AFC North early season battle. Yeah, Bengals uh, going right to, uh, with with two con uh, division games right in the first first two weeks of the season. Uh, figures to be a bounce back spot. I think some folks thought so, especially when we put the number uh, these numbers up on Sunday night here at South Point. Jeff, they laid the uh, the three, the opener, and then uh, went to three and a half. So we know where the threshold is, at least so far, uh, to where we get the buyback. And um, they took the three and a half uh, with the Ravens, even though no Dobbins, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, Achilles they, tear, yep. I mean, and they've got some other injuries too. Uh, they Mark incurred, Andrews didn't uh, play yeah, last they're, week. They're, uh, so this is a game where I think. People are, are going to look and say, you know what? We did not see the Cincinnati Bengals last week. Uh, now they're coming home. They've got that game under their belt. And I, I think this is going to be a game where we see continued Bengals action, uh, particularly as we uh, uh, head to kickoff at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning here in the Pacific time zone. This game also bet over so far this week. 45 and a half did get bet down quickly to yeah. 45 and now back up to 46 and a half. 46 and a half. Again, weather will play here. It looks, I mean, a long term forecast, uh, I think, looks pretty pretty good there. And again, let's remember, right? What the, what the Bengals scored three points last week? Uh, three points. They, they figured to, uh, to score. I would imagine a little they'll more score more. Three this week. And if they don't, there'll be bigger problems. Well, that's, uh, that, <laughs> then that, that will hit. That might be the lead in the next week's show. Uh, I think it would be the lead in the next week's show if the Bengals are sitting at 0 2 with no touchdowns scored. That's, uh, that's reserved for the Jets, uh, with Zach Wilson. No, no touchdowns, multiple weeks running. Uh, by the way, the uh, Bengals will play a Monday night game against the Rams in week three. The Rams with one of the more impressive wins of week one, beating up on the road in the second half on Seattle. We'll actually go to that game right yeah. now because. The people are betting the Rams yeah. at home against the Niners. So San Francisco, Vinny, I don't even think it was a debate. San Francisco looked like the best team in the NFL a week ago. From the get-go, clearly dominant against Pittsburgh. Win, cover, easily on the road. Brock Purdy looked really good. And that is something that if Purdy looks really good, mm -hmm. 
not going to be long before the, the betting favorites to win it all pretty much everywhere across the board. Certainly no, no worse uh, for the wear, right, in terms of the injury coming back uh, the way he did. And we talked about this game last week, you know, the, the Steeler game last week. Both, both teams with, uh, with elite defenses, I mean, but, but the difference was the Niners with so many offensive, not only weapons, but options in oh, their yeah. schemes. Um, this game opened seven. It got as high as eight. Uh, um, the initial money came in, laid the seven, laid the seven and a half. Uh, did get buyback at eight and uh, now sit at seven and a half. The total on this one being bet up from 42 to 44 and a half. I want to talk about the Rams because the Rams, to me, the Rams game, one of, if not the bigger surprises of, of, of last weekend. Definitely. I mean, the Rams figured to really you know, to, 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 to be one of the teams that struggled, right? And uh, Seattle was, you know, we talked about it there, that there was support for them in the future book as a, as a, as a sleeper. I mean, vision playoffs. Just, yeah. People were looking, you know, at, at, at the Seahawks uh, with their draft, the speed, uh, some free agent signings. I mean, the biggest question obviously was, was under center, but I, I have to tell you after that first quarter, the re this was, I don't know if you got a chance to watch the game, Jeff, but you, well, you were back there with it. It was domination. It was they a one-sided They destroyed them in the second half. They absolutely controlled the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. They, uh, I thought Stafford, they protected Stafford. His receivers were good. Uh, the Rams were, were outstanding. And, and defensively, they made life miserable for, for the Seahawks' uh, offensive line. And now the Seahawks have some – they came out of that game – with 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 injuries, and you know we'll, we'll talk about uh, you know we'll the, get Seahawks the Seahawks here next yeah. in a little bit. But this this game here, the, the Rams, uh, definitely one of maybe the biggest surprise of last week, and won it going away. Uh, Puka Naka last week, terrific. Uh, we have like a uh, uh, had unbelievable eleven catch or twelve k. Even two two out well, both with over a hundred yards great. receiving. They were like, they could run the ball. Uh, it, it they was were great. Look, it's almost like Sean McVay can still coach. <laughs> and again, again, you don't want to overreact, which is another reason why. Look, this game is in Los Angeles, and they're still a, a touchdown, a touchdown favorite. Yeah, no, and, a, and underdog. I mean, and the line is right to me. It's seven no, and a it's half. Absolutely, and yeah. the Niners, the Niners were the most impressive team in Week One, and were always already highly power rated to begin with. The Rams, there was talk for some that the Rams would be the worst team in the NFL. I don't see that happening just because McVay is a better coach than a lot of those coaches yeah. that are coaching the other bad mm -hmm. teams that are at the bottom of the league. Let's, uh, let's get one more here, Vinny. The Seahawks, the Lions. So Detroit, of course, I don't even think the Lions played great on Thursday night against Kansas City. They just protected the football. That was really after that early turnover in the first half. They cashed in on the dropped pick six right into their laps and got the win in Kansas City to get a big 1-0 start to the year. You mentioned it with Seattle. Seattle looks soft. They look soft against the Rams. I don't know and, if they were looking ahead or what, Jeff, I, you to know, be honest but it, but with it, you. But you can't, as a professional, it can't happen. You know, um, divisional game, yeah, too? shocker. So the open five and a half. Yeah. Betters took it to six. Mm -hmm. Now the betters are taking it back down to four and a half. Betting, uh, even with uh, the injuries, the Seahawks. You know, we're talking about. Listen, everybody gets hurt, right? But uh, yep. Tyler Lockett questionable uh, amongst others. Uh, 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 both lines, I think, had had some injuries uh, for the uh, for the Seahawks. So this is a, this is a game where, and you know what? You look at you look at the Lions. This this belief. There's this. It's a different. It's a completely different vibe. We saw that from the second half, uh, actually the whole season last year. Uh, and you, you've you've got to love the way this team, the the vibe of this team. I mean, whether you're a Lions fan or not, you've got to at least respect that. And look now, here they are as uh, four and a half point favorites again, playing on on the number here. I think the general public is certainly going to be all over the Lions here based on what they saw last week between both of these teams. Um, you know what? Credit to, credit the Lions. Full marks. And I, I have to disagree with a remark that was made uh, about, you know, last last uh, Thursday's victory mm -hmm. having an asterisk. You, you go no. into Arrowhead, in that there game, is no asterisk. You win an NFL game, full marks go to you. I mean, I, I get it. There was no Kelsey. It was the first game of the season. The Lions went in there. They competed the entire time, and they took the victory. Credit them. No, it's a, it, that I didn't like that remark uh, on the broadcast yeah. at all. One other thing with this game, the total has been hit to the under in a big way, Vinny. Yeah, fifty-one to forty-seven, a full four. 
four point move. Biggest there. move, uh, biggest move, and I think that's a, uh, a reflection of, of of some of the injuries uh, that uh, that Seattle has. And um, you know, I think initially, if they were not, or if they had scored more points, I mean, obviously this total would have probably opened at fifty two. Again, you know, did we? Uh, you know, we didn't. We didn't over. We certainly didn't overreact to the total. But the betters are speaking, and uh, they're betting the under here. Vinny, let's take one last break. We have more games to get to. We'll get you the final updates as well. Eagles and Vikings. A little bit over an hour from now in Philadelphia. Our final look at that one and more. When we come back, it's Sports by the Book here at the South Point Studio. Once you've satisfied your hunger, get ready for more of the hottest casino games in Vegas. Our 24-hour, 30-table, non-smoking poker room proudly hosts all the most popular poker games with a variety of betting limits. Visit the poker room for a schedule of daily tournaments. Whether you're going to hold them or fold them, the best place for poker is at South Point Casino. You'll notice that our craps tables are usually the loudest in the casino. If you've never played, join one of our free craps lessons to find out what makes this game so exciting. Check with the craps dealer for schedules and give it a roll. Bingo is also an exciting way to spend your time. We offer seven sessions of bingo every day. And each session includes a cash ball jackpot, 12 bingo games, a progressive double action game, and a $10,000 bonus coverall. Electronic units are available. If you haven't played bingo with us, give it a try today. Guests can also get in on the action at our one-of-a-kind race and sports books. Two separate rooms designed to maximize your experience and comfort. Our sports book, with over 400 seats, puts you right in the middle of the action, 24 hours a day. The friendly ticket writers are happy to help, and it's conveniently located next to the famous Del Mar Deli, where you'll find supersized portions of delicious deli items like roast beef, pastrami, and Reuben sandwiches, or soups, salads, and pizza plus spectacular desserts fit for a king. And right next door is the race book, over 150 seats, each with its own TV screen. There are 16 interactive player terminals, so you can bet right from your seat. Welcome back in Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Authentic sports talk here for you today. I'm Jeff Parles, Vinny Maliulo alongside. We're happy to be with you as always. Vinny by the book on tw on Twitter. That's correct. At Jeff Parles for myself. For the studio, so post studio LV on the tweets. If you want to follow all of our projects going on here, we'll be with you at Sports by the Book Thursday through Monday through the whole football season we can't wait for it no it's uh it's here jeff I and mean, people you know what they hit the ground running and you know the build-up was was all summer you every weekend as we got further uh into the summer closer to september uh you could see the uptick in the handle in terms of not only week one but futures uh prop bets and things like that of course the jackpot card which we had five winners last week uh and uh, it it exceeded the twenty five thousand. It was by, like split about thirty nine, right? Uh, yeah, was close, yeah, close, almost uh, four. Yeah, thirty nine, thirty nine thousand. So uh, you know what? And five folks uh, prevailed on it's a nice uh, little Monday payday. Night. Oh, they, on five bucks, that's they, a great day. At five the dollar office. card. Did you? You had how many? Did you, you had a few cards. I didn't have any. You didn't. You you didn't. You weren't one of the five. Oh, 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 oh. I wish I was. Well, we got a whole set of parlay cards uh, for you this week. Uh, as, as always, right behind us uh, here at the South Point. Sportsbook right behind us. Crowd uh, starting to file in. Get about an hour, hour, hour plus yeah. till game time. will be a full boat mm -hmm. once the game starts at uh, a little after 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock Eastern. And Vinny, just a quick update here. Minnesota, Philadelphia hasn't moved the whole time we've been on the air. Yeah. Still six. Still 48 and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that six is going to stand pat until game time. It, it may, Jeff. You know, again, we did open at eight. Let's retrace it yep. and uh, got bet down as low as five and a half. Uh, and then we moved it back yesterday. Uh, as you mentioned, now we sit at six. That's where we're at, 48 and a half, which was the opening total. Did get, uh, was higher. 
uh, uh, last night at 49 and a half. By the way, the money line uh, opened 360 plus three dollars. Now down to 250 uh, plus 210. Of course, uh, typically there'll be an adjustment as, the, as with the point spread change. Uh, the money line to, but that's also folks uh, uh, took a flyer with uh, with the Vikings uh, at three to one and plus two ninety. So uh, uh, it's uh, right now we need the Eagles, and uh, if we do, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be just fine. But again, uh, this is the Thursday night game. So this is this is the fuse, right? This is the, the, the gets us going. It gets it gets the weekend going, right? And then of course, once you know, I'll refer to Monday night. Uh, as, as the explosion. And of course, uh, I, I guess I'm segueing here, uh, just jumping ahead to the next uh, the, of this coming Monday. A bookmaker's dream. A doubleheader, buddy. Well, it's the first of three this year. Love it. On Monday night. Well, back to back weeks of double dips because week three, also a, a Monday night doubleheader. Mm -hmm. I do miss that week one single game window doubleheader, but. Yeah. I well, I, but I would imagine this is pretty good for you guys. Well, our our difference between kicks. if we if we don't have the the week one doubleheader and now we've got three You're good Monday night doubleheaders, I, that's a great trade off <laughs> in our world. So yeah. these two games and Vinny, all all the action will go to the the three primetime games at the end of the week. Oh goodness! Sunday yeah. night, New England and Miami. Miami mm -hmm. right now a three point favorite on the road. All five Patriots starting. Offensive linemen are on the injury report. Mm -hmm. Who knows if that's actually legit or if that's just Belichick being Belichick. <laughs> I, I think it's a combination. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that moved from two to three over the last few days. Total bouncing around, open 45 and a half to 47, now 46 and 46 and a half, and a half. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, go ahead, Vinny. No, no, no this, again, you, you hit on a key point. I mean, the three primetime games, and why are they uh, Why are, are they so popular? Well, it's first of all, they're the, – the, the Sunday night game is the standalone game, and again, I'll refer to it. Uh, uh, I gotta get shirts made. The G game, you know, it, I, I refer to it as the G game. If you had a good good day or a good weekend so far, a good Saturday Sunday, it's the gravy game, right? You're gonna right. you're gonna play it because you're you're doing well. If you didn't, it's the get out game, you know? right? <laughs> so then it goes to Monday, and everything is going to it from that day. And then Monday, of course, is even bigger, uh, particularly when you've got a double header. So and and these games, what's interesting here is we're gonna we're we're certainly not gonna need a three. We're not gonna need the favorite to win for, for any of these games to fall with the favorite by three. You've got the Dolphins as three point favorites, even though they opened as two, they laid the two, they laid the two and a half. Uh, it'll depend on not only the bets that come in on that game, but the the uh, the multi leg bets going to it, parlays, teasers, etc. Uh, Saints Panthers a three. We did go to three and a half. Uh, and uh, they took it. So we again, we 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 don't want to see a three there uh, with the Saints as three point road favorites. And uh, the Browns, uh, they they've laid the uh, they laid the one. They laid everything up to uh, to two. You know, given the injuries that the Steelers have and how good the Browns looked last week, again we uh, uh, this division is is playing itself in in uh, uh, the AFC North is playing itself in the uh, uh, in the first two weeks. Uh, we already uh, uh, spoke about the Ravens and Bengals. Uh, Cam Hayward out. Mm -hmm. Other injuries for uh, the Steelers. Kenny Pickett had a terrific preseason. Uh, the Niners made his life miserable last week. So um, probably going to need both dogs come Monday night. It's interesting because I don't want to overreact to two weeks. Pittsburgh comes here to Vegas for week three. That's Sunday correct. Night. That's the Raiders home opener. Where, where, even though it's a Raider home opener, it's going to be a 50-50 split of fans. Oh, maybe even, yeah. maybe yeah. even 60-40 to the road team in that game. I don't want to call it a got to have it in week two because it's still a long season. But if Pittsburgh gets off 0-2 with losing two home games mm -hmm. in that division, that's a bad place to be for the Steelers. 0-2 two, oh two, with a divisional with two loss. division. Uh, with with a division loss and um, San Francisco. what happened with the uh, with with the Niners? Yeah, yeah. no, it's uh, there's no no question about it. Uh, but again, Jeff, we're seeing teams still trying to figure some things out here in September. Um, you know, there are teams. Look, the Chiefs they 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 didn't start the season particularly well last no. year. Wound up winning winning the Super Bowl, right? Uh, the the Lions. I mean, they. One they had six. They they had a, an awful first half and a, a terrific second half. The Jets had a terrific first half and then had a, a, an abysmal second. So there's there's time. You know, 
there, there, there's time. You know, you've, you've still got, you've got the 17 games now. You've got the added uh, extra playoff spot and all. But that said, you certainly w- would much rather be 2-0, and 1-1 at least, or rather than 0-2. And uh, as we all know, Vinny, breaking news here on the show, Mike Tomlin has never gone under 500 in the regular season. Is that is that the broad is that almost like a broadcaster's <laughs> jinx? You know, hey, that I mean, that that's been mentioned uh, roughly eight hundred million times <laughs> over the last uh, yeah last few years. Well, if there's a guy that can figure it out, it's uh, it's Mike Tomlin. Doesn't get enough credit. Vinny, I want to hit two more games before we get sure. out of here. Here, uh, local angle here. You guys got smoked on the Raiders last week. We did Raiders winning outright in Denver as three and a half or three point underdogs. They go to Buffalo. Buffalo, of course, coming off the Monday night loss to the Jets. So this is right now eight and a half Bills laying it, total forty seven. But the betters undeterred by Buffalo by uh, the Raiders win and the Buffalo Bills possibly coming in undervalued. Been all way all one way traffic on the Raiders the last few days. Well, open ten, down to nine and a half. They then they laid the the nine. I went back to ten, but it's been all Raiders uh, in. Uh, you know, in the last 48 hours, no real shock there. This is, you know, this is a, a Raider town and the, and the Raider fans that are here, certainly they, they, they back their team. They will never bet against the Raiders. They I mean, will not. You, you heard, you were here. Last, we had oh. a pretty good Raider contingent in the book last week in full regalia. <laughs> uh, so no, still no Von Miller for, for, for the bills. Um, now do the bills figure to, to, to make some adjustments and sort things out is, you know, I don't think the Raider defense is quite what the Jet defense is, uh, but the, the the Raiders the Raiders can score, and you know, uh, Broncos had a pretty good defense. I thought the Bills defense was 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 good last they week. They were good enough. I mean, um, but this is a game too. I think they'll be. Listen, there are certain teams that were never at a loss for money on, and the Bills are one of them. Before we get out of here, Vinny, Chiefs up from two and a half to three and a half. Total has legitimately not moved the whole week. It's been 51 the whole week here behind us. Yeah. We assume Travis Kelsey's going to play. Looks he, like it. Yeah, I think he's looks probable. like looks like he's going to. If he does not, this goes back to two, two and a half, like it opened or back or back further. Uh if tra- if Travis Kelsey plays, then you know, we're at three and a half. They laid two and a half, they laid three. Uh they'll continue to bet the Chiefs and bet against them going oh, oh and two. Um, and the Jags with some offensive line injuries yep. uh, here. So, uh, and don't forget, uh, better defense now uh, with uh, with uh, with the Chiefs, right? Chris Jones Chris will Jones be there this week. Is uh, is is going to play this week? I'm looking forward to that one. Be a that's game. a big game for, and I know with Kansas City avoid 0 and two, and that's going to be the narrative. If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. You want to announce to everyone that the end of last season wasn't a fluke. Mm-hmm. You got the defending champs in your house. You always want to make a statement against you, the Chiefs. You find a way to win that game, and not only that, forget sending the Chiefs to 0 2. Jacksonville, you can have some aspirations to get the number one seed, and all sure. of a sudden, uh, with Cincinnati and Buffalo now looking the same, you can get some weird, weird paths to the Super Bowl here in Vegas, potentially in the AFC. An early changing of the guard, Jeff? Maybe, maybe. Again, I, I Jacksonville's the number one seed going into the year because of the way their schedule broke. So. Not that I think they are the best team in the AFC, but hey, sometimes the schedule is all that matters. This is a time for them to start showing it. Sure is. Sure is. That's all the time we have. I'm Jeff Parles. He's Vinny Maliulo. This has been Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. You still got about an hour to get your bets in on the Vikings and the Eagles, and we will be back tomorrow. Chris Andrews, Jimmy Vaccaro will be yep. alongside us as well for a football pr- Friday here on Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio.